Next up in chemistry is the topic designer polymers. Uh, largely this is just an advert for Gore-Tex really, I'm not quite sure why they decided to do that but I'm sure you'll get the picture pretty quickly. So polymers we already know are basically used to make plastics and as part of the exam you need to be able to decide which plastic you should use for which job. So some examples, we've got polyethene um, which can be used for plastic bags and uh, containing uh, bottles of hazardous chemicals like bleach and for holding recyclables. So the reason we would use it for those things is because it's quite resistant to corrosive materials and it's very resilient so it doesn't break easily. So that's why you might want to use it for that job. So we have polypropene, which can be used as the shell for cars to uh, make rope and also as outdoor furniture. And its major quality is the fact that it's basically waterproof. So polystyrene is our next one. Uh, polystyrene is good because it uh, breaks quite easily. So it's quite good for packing material because rather than it continuing to carry the force all the way through, it snaps off instead so you damage your polystyrene instead of your packet or the thing that you're packing up and then we've got PVC which is a very rigid material so it's good for gutters and windows you don't need to remember these you just need to basically be able to uh, be given a plastic in a situation and suggest why it might be good for that situation it's pretty much common sense really so you should be absolutely fine with it Okay, we just need to define a couple of terms, and they're very similar, so you just got to pay close attention. So, first up is intramolecular forces, and these are forces that are inside the molecule. Then we have intermolecular forces, which are the forces between different molecules. Just got to pay attention to those vowels. Right, when we are looking at these plastics, we need to know why they have their different properties. This is for higher only, by the way, sorry. Um, plastics that have weak intermolecular forces between each molecule can be stretched really easily. So they kind of look like this one here. They're just sort of like big long strands and if you stretch them, they, if you pulled on each end, they'd stretch out. So they tend to be quite stretchy and move very easily. This is a slightly different example. So here I've still got my long chains of polymers but this time there are bonds between the chains. So this means that I've got strong intermolecular forces because the, this chain is a molecule, this chain is a molecule, but there are bonds between them. And this means that if I pulled on the ends of that one, it wouldn't stretch in the same way because the chains are all held close together in a rigid way. And they also have high melting points because I have to put more energy in to overcome those intermolecular forces something we mentioned when we were talking about fractional distillation as well. Okay, next thing we need to know is what we use nylon and Gore-Tex for. Nylon is light, tough, waterproof and blocks UV, so we tend to use it for clothing really. Tights is a great example. Gore-Tex is then a special type of nylon. It's nylon that's been coated with something called PTFE. And it's basically just um, nylon that can breathe. So it's waterproof. Rain can't get in, but sweat can get out. So we use it for outdoor clothing. So to show you how it works, um, here we've got our inner fabric, then we've got our layer of Gore-Tex, then we've got our outer fabric. And if the rain falls on the outer fabric and the sweat comes from the inside, the sweat can pass through the Gore-Tex and it gets caught on the outer side and pushed through to the outer fabric, the same as the rain that got stopped there. And then the water just collects on the outside and then evaporates off. So sweat can leave, but rain can't get in. And the reason is because there are tiny little holes, the Gore-Tex, that are small enough for the sweat to get through, but that are sorry, they are small enough so the sweat can get through, but they are so small that the water can't get through going the other way. Uh, it's because your sweat is as a gas and the liquid and the rain when it hits you is a liquid. So it depends on the state it's in as to whether or not it can get through. Just means it's waterproof but breathable. That's pretty much all you need to know. I've given you way more information than I'll ask for in the exam really. It's just a case of knowing that Gore-Tex is good for outdoor clothing because it keeps the water out 
but let sweat leave as well. Right then, next thing we need to know is what happens to waste polymers. Now, most polymers are not biodegradable. That means that they do not um, get decomposed by bacteria. They take a very long time to decay. They just stay as plastics. They just hang around. So most of them just end up in landfill. Our other option is to burn them, but as you can see in this, from this image, when we burn plastics, we release an awful lot of toxic fumes. So it's not really a good idea. Best option is to recycle or reuse plastics because we can't really do much else with them. You do need to know that there is some research going on into developing biodegradable plastics at the moment. It's a big area and once it gets cracked, uh, someone's going to make a lot of money. The problem we have at the minute is making biodegradable plastics that are also durable. So I know there's some research into trying to make ones that dissolve in water. So you use your plastic bag and then you stick it in the sink, dissolve it in the water and flush it down the plug hole. Um, but none of these, are, nothing's perfect yet. That's an area of research basically. Okay, that's it for designer polymers. Pretty straightforward. Remember, any questions, ask me in class. But I wouldn't imagine you have very many from this one. It's all pretty straightforward.